Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads brings you the premiere performance of a new musical play by Lawrence and Lee. Birthday, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Lucille Norman. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another musical first is brought to you by the American Railroad. The same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. The same railroads that bring you the finest in safe, comfortable, all-weather transportation at low cost. And now, here is our star, Jordan McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, Lucille Norman joins me as we bring you a delightful new play with music, Birthday. <laughs> Funny thing, we always think of a birthday as a day of cakes and candles, presents and congratulations, and we forget what it really means, day of birth. Well, I want to tell you about a very special birthday. It began on an ordinary Monday morning. I was staring at myself in the shaving mirror the way men do just before the last bit of lather disappears. Suddenly, I knew. Today was the day. It's a wonderful world. I'm just walking on air. It's a wonderful world. I've got more than my share. Baby, I must be lucky through and through. Because it's a wonderful world. Loving, wonderful you. Honey, Betty, how you feel this morning? Do you think this is going to be... Hey, Betty, where are you? In the kitchen, Jeff. Coffee will be in a minute. Oh, sweetheart, I, I could have fixed the coffee. You should have stayed in bed. On a day like this? Have you looked outside, Jeff? There are buds on the trees, and the air is so clear and sweet you can taste it. You're all right, aren't you, honey? Sure. Use your juice. You're not scared? Of course not. <sighs> That's the way to talk. Nothing to be afraid of. It's the most normal thing that could ever happen to anybody. Right? Here's your coffee, Jeff. You know, I've got a very strong feeling that today is going to be the day. A man gets a feeling about things like this, you know. Will you be disappointed if it's a girl, Jeff? Oh, no, no. I won't even be disappointed if it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny that we call it it? Yeah. Now, look, sweetheart, about today, if it happens today, I'm not going to be like all the pacing fathers in the funny papers and in B-movies. We're going to treat this just like a regular, ordinary day, okay? Okay. After all, being born could happen to anybody. <laughs> now, look, if you start to feel funny, call me at the office, and I'll get you to a hospital right away. Good. Uh, one, one thing, honey, you realize this is costing a, a lot of money, so we ought to economize on the... Unimportant things like mm, flowers. Oh, I don't want any flowers. Promise me you won't waste money on flowers. That's silly. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. Bye for now, honey. Bye. Gee, I wonder if you'll like this young mister yet to be, or miss yet to be. Will you like our lullabies? Until you arrive, little unknown, I guess I'll have to pra practice rocking your sofa pillow. Lullaby and good night With roses bedight Creep into thy bed There be no 
tried to walk down the street with the average stride of an average guy on an average day. Well, I guess there was an extra bounce in my step. Today the day, Jeff? Oh, hiya, Murray. Could be. How's the missus, T.J.? Oh, uh, she's blooming, Gus. Just blooming. This day must be my red letter day. Everything has such a rosy glow. Never, never knew a better day. There's a new one coming. I feel like coming. It's a wonderful world. I'm just walking on air. Talk of heaven on earth. I've got more than my share. So happy because my family's gonna be three. Loving for one, loving for two. Now I've got love enough for one, two, three. When I arrived at the office, the little cubby hole where I work is an accountant. With my name in the door, C. T. J. Smith. Well, the phone was jangling as if it was having a nervous fit. Hello, T.J. Smith speaking. Oh, hello, honey. A- anything wrong? Oh, I'll be right there. You lie down, nothing to worry about. I'll have you at the hospital before you know it. Uh, uh happy birthday t- to it. <laughs> Dr. Adamson, how, how is she? Fine, not a thing to worry about. She amazes me. She just turned and she said, I'll be seeing you, Jeff. And then she walked in there, calm and cool as anything. Good for her. Now you realize, young man, that there may be a long wait. Probably won't be any news until late afternoon. Oh, I don't plan to hang around here. I'm going back to the office. Business as usual. That's sensible. Can I reach you there by phone? Oh, sure, sure. I won't bother you until you call me. Fine. Just like I told Betty, Doc, we're going to treat this whole thing as just a perfectly average everyday Monday. You know something? I couldn't go back to the office. Not right away. I walked over to the park. It was a park that kind of belonged to Betty and me. And everywhere I looked, at the little merry-go-round at the trees of the tiny lake, I saw Betty. Saw her face. I sat on a bench, fed the squirrels from a bag of peanuts, counted the branches on a tree, and listened to the music of the merry-go-round. I saw father lift the little boy off the carousel, and the kid grabbed onto his father's hand and clung for dear life. Time to go home, Billy. Uh, your little boy? Yep. How old is he? Two and a half. I'm going to have a kid like that in about two, 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 two and a half years. Huh? Well, you see, he isn't born yet. Quite. Or maybe it's a she. You never know for sure. Uh, let's go home, Billy. Come here, I'll buy you a balloon. 
Well, I watched the kid take the balloon in his hand as if he was holding a little world all of his own on a penny string. Then I rushed over and bought a balloon and handed it to a little fella beside me. Little fella wasn't there. Balloon, little world, rose up into the sky. A tiny red globe sailing higher and higher. And, and I sang a song to my child who wasn't born yet. Now here's a day for lost speeches. Your age is almost zero years. I do not know your sex or size. The color of your hair or eyes. And though we haven't met as yet, we shall before the sun has set. It's time you deign to dock your shyness and grant us audience, your highness. First is brought to you by the American Railroad. The same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. The same railroads that bring you the finest in safe, comfortable, all-weather transportation at low cost. And now, here is our star, Jordan McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, Lucille Norman joins me as we bring you a delightful new play with music, Birthday. It's a funny thing. We always think of a birthday as a day of cakes and candles presents and congratulations, and we forget what it really means, day of birth. Well, I want to tell you about a very special birthday. It began on an ordinary Monday morning. I was staring at myself in the shaving mirror the way men do just before the last bit of lather disappears. And suddenly, I knew, today was the day. It's a wonderful world, I'm just walking on air. It's a wonderful world, I've got more than my share. Baby, I must be lucky through and through. Cause it's a wonderful world, loving, wonderful you. Honey, Betty... How you feel this morning? Do you think this is going to be... Hey, Betty, where are you? In the kitchen, Jeff. Coffee will be in a minute. Oh, sweetheart, I, I could have fixed the coffee. You should have stayed in bed. On a day like this? Have you looked outside, Jeff? There are buds on the trees, and the air is so clear and sweet you can taste it. You're all right, aren't you, honey? Sure. Use your juice. You're not scared? Of course not. <sighs> That's the way to talk. Nothing to be afraid of. It's the most normal thing that could ever happen to anybody. Right? Here's your coffee, Jeff. You know, I've got a very strong feeling that today is going to be the day. A man gets a feeling about things like this, you know. Will you be disappointed if it's a girl, Jeff? Oh, no, no. I won't even be disappointed if it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny that we call it it? Yeah. Now, look, sweetheart, about today, if it happens today, I'm not going to be like all the pacing fathers simply increasing their efficiency, spending on the average more than a billion dollars a year for research and new equipment and facilities of all kinds. As a result, you and your neighbors, wherever you live, will share ever more widely in all the good things to come from an even stronger America, served by ever better, more efficient railroads. <laughs> Now, here is Act Two of the new Lawrence and Lee play with music, Birthday, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, Lucille Norman. Birthday. 
I rushed to the hospital. They told me the doctor was with her, and they just said, wait. Felt so helpless, unable to do anything but hope and wait. The doctor will call as soon as there's anything definite. What kind of complications are there? I really don't know, Mr. Smith. Well, isn't there anything I can do? Perhaps a prayer. Yeah, yeah, tell me. Is there a church around here someplace? Right across the street. Thanks, I'll be back. It was dark out on the empty street. I remembered something Betty used to say. Love is the most important thing in the world. If you remember that, nothing can ever get you down. From there in the night, I I heard her voice. It's very clear. Our love is here to stay.
back at the hospital, the doctor was just coming out of the delivery room. His face was tired and drawn. I grabbed his arm. What's happened, Doc? Is Betty all right? I was just coming to tell you. I was worried for a while. She all right? That's all I want to know. She's resting very comfortably. Thank the Lord. Don't you want to hear about your son? Son? I, I got a boy? A fine boy. Seven pounds, five ounces. Oh, did you hear that, everybody? I'm the father of a boy. Got a name for him? Well, I don't know if you ever heard what the TJ in my name stands for, Doc. Everybody calls me Jeff. But it's Thomas Jefferson Smith. So I got it all figured out what Junior's going to be called. It's a big holiday everywhere. For the Smith family has a brand new heir. He's the joy heaven sent, and we proudly present Mr. Dwight David Eisenhower Smith. When he grows up, he never will stray. With a name like the one that he's got today. As he walks down the street, folks will say, Please to meet Mr. Dwight David Eisenhower Smith. What a smile And how he shows it He'll keep happy all day long What a name, I bet he knows it With that handle, how can he go wrong? And the folks in the town all agree He'll be famous, as famous as he can be How can he be a dud or a sick in the mud? When he's quiet, David Eisenhower Smith is yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir Mrs. Smith, I thought you'd like to meet your son. Hello, baby. Hello, son. There. Now, is that comfortable? Oh, yes. There's somebody outside who wants to see you, too. Jeff. Betty. I bought you this bouquet of roses. So many. Jeff, you weren't supposed to. We were going to make this just a regular, ordinary Honey, kind of... A day like this? Well, it's special. Darling, how do you like your son? He's beautiful. I guess. Happy birthday, boy. Now we've got to sing him lullabies, Jeff, together. Oh, to sleep, oh, to sleep, baby, go to sleep. As you cry, close your eyes, blue as summer skies. In the sad, foolish bed, man and mix of Lucille Norman will be back in just one moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Isabel Jewell, Stanley Farrar, Fred Mackay, and to our entire company. Birthday was an original music play written especially for the Railroad Hour by 
Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? One good reason why America's railroads are the nation's number one form of transportation is that for the seventh consecutive year, the railroads have set a new record in operating efficiency. And equally important is this progress itself are the reasons for it. Never-ending research to find better ways to do the job. Expert professional railroad management alert to put research results into practice. And private investment on a huge scale. As long as these practices are encouraged and permitted to flourish, America's railroads will continue to be the cornerstone of our vital transportation system. Thank you, Marvin. Well, Lucille, you're wonderful, especially on the lullaby. Well, thank you, Gordon. You're doing the lullaby bit right now, aren't you, Dad? Yes. <laughs> There's a brand new baby boy at our house. Yes, sir. What's his name? Robert Bruce McRae. Well. He's Irish. <laughs> That's what they are, B. <laughs> Well, what's on the show train next week, Father? Uh, Lucy, here's a hint. <laughs> put on your old gray bonnet, put a blue ribbon on it while I hear Joe down into the shade. You and I, Lucy, are going to tell the wonderful story of the wonderful one-horse shade. Wouldn't miss it. Good night, Gordon. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night, and another musical first, on behalf of the other members of the cast and of the American Railroads, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying good night. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. And reminding you that cerebral palsy is one of the greatest cripplers of mankind. But medical science has learned how to bring new help and hope to the hundreds of thousands of cerebral palsy sufferers in America. Won't you help by supporting the National United Cerebral Palsy Campaign during May? Now stay tuned for your Monday Night of Music on NBC. The Voice of Firestone features Dorothy Warren Scholl and Robert Roundsville on the NBC Radio Network.